In this video, I will teach you how to set up a program in Scratch that will calculate the central tendency for any data set. This program can be used in the math classroom to enhance understanding of calculating the mean, median, and mode, as well as creating a 21st century relevant lesson as you use code in the math classroom. I am one of the creators of csmmath.org. My name is Ashley Tavis. csmmath.org is a site created to teach educators how to implement coding into their math classroom. I've spoken on this topic at many math conferences throughout the U.S., have helped many other teachers implement these lessons into their own classrooms, and have seen the amazing effects it has on learning for my own students. Let's get started. We're going to start our program by launching with this green flag. So we're going to start by finding the mean. So we'll need a variable called the mean, as well as when we find the mean, we sum up all of our numbers and divide by the total. Now you'll notice these appear on the left hand side. I'm going to uncheck total and sum. Now I am going to also create a list called data and this will store all of my data values. So typically when we start a program we like to clear everything we've ran in a previous program. So we're going to start by deleting all of the values in data as well as setting all of our variables to zero. And this will allow us to start our program off with a clean slate here. So the first thing we want to do in our program is we want to ask how many numbers are in the set. And whatever the user types into this question will be stored in this answer block here. And their total should be set to the total number we're using here today. Now depending on the total they type in, we're going to have them please enter a number from their list and we will store the number that they type in to our list called data. And how many times we want to repeat this? Well, it depends on how many total numbers we have. So we will repeat this not 10 times, but the total number that they type in above. So now what we've got here is a program that will ask how many numbers are in the set, and it will allow us to enter these values into our table. And you'll notice when I hit the green flag, this resets. Perfect. So our next task here is we want to sum up the numbers in our list. So we're going to set our sum and we're going to add each value that's typed into our list to the value of sum. And sum notice is starting at zero and each answer that is typed in will change the value of sum as many times as we repeat this loop here. So notice what's taking place. How many numbers are in the set? We'll say three. Our first number is one and we'll notice here now our sum value is set at one. And let's type in another one here. We'll type in three, so now my sum is four, and we'll type in six to bring my sum to 10. So you'll notice this is taking place throughout this loop. And finally, to calculate the mean, we'll do this at the very end by taking our sum and dividing it by our total. So here is our mean calculator. Now for our median, let's have this be prompted by when the space key is clicked. I'm going to move my mean code over here and now we'll be working in the median. I'm going to take all of this and duplicate it as our program is going to start the same way. So we can take out our sum here. We don't need that for our median. But what we will need, and we can take this piece off as well, is we will need a way to identify if the set is odd or even. And here's what I mean by that. If we were going to find the mean of this or median of this set of data, we would find the middle number, which is three, an odd set, identifying the middle number. For an even set, we need to identify the middle two numbers, add them together, and find the average. So 2.5, for example, would be our mean or median here. So our first step as we solve finding the median is we want to know if our set is even or odd. So we're going to use um, some modular arith arithmetic here as we solve this. So we are going to take the total mod two, and if this is an even set, anything mod two should give us zero if it's even. So in this if then else block, our first spot here is talking about even data here, even data sets. Now, if this is the case, we are going to, you'll notice in here, we've got an item. So we're going to take an item of our data list, and we are going to divide 
our total by 2. So this should find the center of our data. But with an even list, we know that this would find, in this case, this number right here. And now we also need to add one to that to find the item number that is directly after. So the only difference in this next piece is we are going to find that number, but we are going to add one to it here. Now, with these things, we are going to find the average. So we're going to add this part of our list to this number of our list, and we are going to divide this value by 2. And what are we going to set this to? We're going to set our, our median. We actually need to create a new variable here. We are going to set our median to this, oops, here we go, to this value. Great. Now with an odd set, we are just needing to find the middle number. So I'm going to duplicate this code right here. But the only difference here is when we find the middle number here, 5 divided by 2 per se, we're going to get 2.5. So we need to round up to our nearest whole value to get to that middle number. And we actually have a round block here in Scratch. So we will round this total divided by 2, and that will be the number in the set that we would like to use here. And we will set this as the median if our set is has an odd number of values. This is the code that will allow us to find the median. The only piece we need to add here is when we're entering a number, please enter a number. Enter your numbers in order from least to greatest, as this code here will not sort those from least to greatest. All right, fabulous. I'm going to move this to the side. And the mode is our trickiest. We've saved our trickiest for last, but we can do this. Um, we'll pull this block out, and let's prompt this with um, the up arrow key being pressed. So again, I'm going to duplicate most of this code here, but then I am going to get rid of this piece right here. So for my mode, I need to create two variables here, a temp variable, you will see. So a temporary value and a, we'll give it an x value and a y value. Now, typically I'm going to actually put in here evaluated number and rest of list. And this will help us make sense of this today because this can get a little bit tricky. So I'm going to set up a few things here to start like my temp value, this will make sense as we run through here. And I'm going to set my x value to 0. Now, I need to, here to start, I'm going to put a few nested loops here together. So for example, my first is going to repeat this, the total number of blocks we have. And I'm going to put another repeat in here for the total as well. All right, so our goal here is we need to take a number in our list, and we need to compare it to the rest of the values in the list. So we've got a, a nested loop here as we're going to be evaluating this. So to start, we're going to call x the current number that's being evaluated, and y is going to be a changing value that's changing through the rest of the data and comparing it to our x value. So right away, we are going to set y, oops, right here, set y to zero, and we're going to set another variable we're going to call count, we're going to set count to zero. So count is going to total, let's say I'm comparing to one and I find another one, my count is going to up by one, find another one, it's going to up by two. So count is keeping track of how many times my values are repeating here. So hence our mode. Now the thing we wanna do here is we want to compare the x value, our current value, to the rest in the list. So we are going to say, we're going to come in here and we're going to take our item and we're going to pair, compare the x value of our item to the y value of our item. 
And if these things are equal, which means my, val my values here have repeated, then we need to take some action. So we are going to put in an if block in here, and we're going to say if these values are equal to each other, we want to do a couple of things. We want to first change my count value. And notice I'm saying change not set. I'm changing my count by one, as well as then it's going to calculate how many times these numbers are the same. So therefore, how many times my number repeats. And then outside of the list here, I'm going to change my y value by one. So then it's comparing to, first it was comparing to three. Now it's going to compare to six and it's going to repeat this throughout the number in my list. And finally here then, after I've compared to that x value, I need to compare my next x value by changing this by one. We'll come right back up to the loop, we'll change our x value and we'll do this all over again. So basically this right here is setting up a program that's tallying this count for each x value that we're evaluating in the list, comparing it to the rest here. Now our last bit of code here that we need to add is something that's going to track which number in my list had the greatest mode or had the highest number of count here. So we're going to say if our count value here is greater, and here's where our temporary variable comes in. So right now it's set at zero, so right away we know since count is changing by one here, this is going to change. So we will say, if my count variable is bigger than my temporary variable, and we need to drag this outside, then we are going to set our mode to that item, that current item, that current X that we're on in our list. So if this count is the biggest, we're going to set this as our mode. And then we are going to set, oops, we are going to set our temporary variable to now be valued at this value of count. So the only time this will change again now is if this count value has replaced or been higher than the previous count value here. Now to finish this out, I'm just going to get rid of some of these variables here so our program looks a little bit cleaner here and this is the code for our mode here which seems to be the most intense but in terms of what is this actually doing it's taking a value from our list comparing it to the rest and calculating here which number in our list had the greatest time that it was repeated here now a big program here but break it into pieces and do the same with your students so I've taught you the steps to find or to create this central tendency program in Scratch, but to get the full student and teacher guide to this lesson, either visit us at csnmath.org or click the button below in the comments that will bring you right to this post on our website. If you enjoyed this video, I would love to know so I can start to make more content like this and help you implement coding into your math classroom with ease. Give me a like below if you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to subscribe for new videos every single week on how to implement code into your math classroom to help students become college and career ready, while at the same time deepening their understanding of key math concepts.